Hello, I'm Philadelphia City Council Member Kenyatta Johnson. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our first ever Virtual Women's History Month celebration. This celebration held every March since I became a councilman in 2012 is one of the most important that my office organizes every year because we take the time to celebrate the vital role of women in Philadelphia, the greater Philadelphia region, American history and world history. The coronavirus pandemic has kept us from gathering together to celebrate Women's History Month, but I am looking forward to everyone gathering together in person to celebrate the achievements of women in March 2022. Our theme for this year's Women's History Month event, Women on the Move, is a celebration of more than 40 remarkable women from throughout the city. Many of them live in the second councilmanic district. These women have a variety of careers and backgrounds and make extraordinary contributions to our community every day. They will all receive a citation from Philadelphia City Council for their achievement. The citation reads, the Council of the City of Philadelphia is pleased and proud to honor and congratulate you for your phenomenal work and leadership in your community during the Women's History Month celebration. Whereas women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made contributions to, to the growth and strength of the nation and the world in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas American women have played and continue to play a critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of the life of the nation by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside the home. And whereas American women have been leaders, not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, especially the peace movement, each of which created a more fair and just society for all. And whereas, despite these contributions, the role of American women in, in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature teaching and study of American and world history. And whereas, this year, the theme for National Women's History Month is Choose the Challenge, which presents the idea that from challenge comes change. So the theme urges the calling out of bias and inequality with the goal of making major change to make things more inclusive. And whereas the lives of these women and their work inspire girls and women to achieve their full potential and encourage boys and men to respect the diversity and depth of women's experience. And whereas during the month of March, thousands of events are held throughout the world to inspire women and celebrate the social, political, and economic achievements of women while focusing world attention on areas requiring further action. Therefore, by virtue of this citation, the Council of the City of Philadelphia is pleased and proud to honor and congratulate you for your phenomenal work and leadership in your community for Women's History Month. With appreciation, we extend to you the sincere respect and admiration of this legislative body, and I want to personally say congratulations and thank you. I want to thank Philadelphia native and NBC News White House correspondent, Kristen Welker, for being the keynote speaker for this year's Women's History Month celebration. You will hear her comments a little later in our program. It is now the time we all have been waiting for, the stars of today's program. Here are 2021 Women's History Month celebration honorees. Nina Ahmad, President of the Philadelphia Now Education Fund. <laughs> Fatima Ali, Community Advocate. Rashida Ali Campbell, Community Advocate. Elavale Anderson Reeves, 
community advocate. Anaya Ayers, co-founder of Anaya Ayers Mission. Sidaya Bagley, entrepreneur. Sharon Bailey, community advocate. Odess Blocker, Community Advocate. Akela Brown, CEO for Dimples for Days Incorporated. Nicole Brown, Community Advocate. <laughs> DJ Dior Cartel, Media Personality. Christy Clark, Community Advocate. Charisma Donaldson, Entrepreneur and Social Media Influencer. Naima Dunbar, film producer and entertainer. Crystal Evans, president of Money Talks Education. Chantal French, Entrepreneur. Shani George, Registered Nurse and Business Owner. Jennifer Greenberg, Executive Director of Neighborhood Garden Trust. Shante Hall, Entrepreneur. Katherine Hicks, publisher at the Philadelphia Sunday Sun. <laughs> Charlie Hills, community advocate. Turquoise Jones, Entrepreneur. We're at the halfway point in this year's Virtual Women's History Month celebration. We will complete our list of honorees in a moment, but let's take time now to celebrate this special occasion with poetry. Poetry is an art form that has survived for thousands and thousands of years. This event would not be complete without a poetry reading to uplift our souls 
during one of the most difficult times in world history. Performing for us this year is poet and author Rachel Mariano. Rachel Mariano was born into an artistic family. Her father was a playwright and her mother a classically trained mezzo-soprano. The arts played a vital role in her Trent, New Jersey upbringing. Today, Rachel is an educator in the Philadelphia School District. Here is Rachel Mariana. Hello. The poem that I'm about to share with you today captures female vulnerabilities and victories. It is not about explaining the varied reasons why women can comfortably identify with feeling somewhere close to ugly, but about how absurd it is to succumb to seeing ourselves as anything less than beautiful. Womankind are all unfortunate victims of ugly girl beautiful, transitioning from two opposing views of beautiful and ugly at the whim of someone's rejection of womanhood or someone's acceptance. It is especially grieves me that women who are just emerging into womanhood are easily entangled into entertaining an ugly perspective. It matters little whether or not these young ladies have been exposed to wise elders, affirming loving words, and diverse dynamic images of beauty. The pull of narrow-minded, highly promoted media images of beauty or the bullies that play on the play yard can scream far more loudly than strong or weakly laid foundations of, yes, you are beautiful. This poem is both a vulnerable war cry and a victory stance. I pray that Ugly Girl Beautiful will further inspire womankind to abandon the demons of ugly and thrive in the spirit of beauty. Ugly Girl Beautiful. Ugly Girl Beautiful depending on the view, the camera's angle, the history of his perception, the history of her definition of what is beautiful. Ugly girl only beautiful because some other you says so? Oh no. How shallow, how sorry, how weak is the foundation of your Self-esteem. Ugly girl, beautiful only when he cat calls your name or dogs you out by calling you bees and all kind of other negative no's. And with a mm-hmm, you nod and agree. How degrading. How low. Don't you know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? Is the reflection of your heart, bees and negative nose, is this the you you really know? No, beautiful. No, beautiful. Rethink. What you have allowed to be spoken to you, over you, and through you. It is time for the master's view. Daughters of Eden conceived in love's varying melanin measures. From purplish black browns to woolen whites to ashen grays. All the colors of the beauty of night today. A glorious blossoming gradient of color, pinks, red, brown, star, lace, freckled face, orange to yellow, beige to reds, pinks to ivories and whites, beautiful as the transition of day to night. Ugly girl, beautiful with a bosom big enough to embrace the world. An ugly girl, beautiful with a bosom you barely have to conceal. It's past time to get real. Sit, 
Take your big behind. Henry had a hippo long lash to wish you had a mm, muffin top. Thick and stack, six pack, voluptuous weight, graceful gait, luxurious long, svelte, graceful, short legged, long legged, bony and phony nails, African nose and Roman nose and hammer toes, thick lips and thighs. Thin lips and almond eyes, cellulite tone thighs and wide eyed, naturally brunette but now unnaturally blonde, and even pink, nappy headed, dreaded, kinky, weave to believe hair that is so in that now it is sewn in, clipped in, dyed in to cover your gray, natural, silver, and ball headed, beautiful self. Down. Sit down and think and thank God that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image and his image is beautiful. So you are beautiful all the time and all the time beautiful, even when you ugly. Acting ugly, that is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel Mariano, for that wonderful performance. Let us now complete our list of honorees for the 2021 Virtual Women's History Month celebration. Ming Leong, entrepreneur. Nora Liktash, Community Advocate. The Little Sister Band. Sarah Lomax Reese, President and CEO of Word Radio. <clears throat> Elena McDonald, Medical Doctor. Ayana McKendrick, Entrepreneur. Dolores Mills, Founder of the House of Abel and Community Activist. Jamila Moore, Vice President of Government Banking for J.P. Morgan Chase. Darisha Parker, Pennsylvania State Representative of the 198th State House District. Samantha Pearson, Chief of Staff for State Representative Mary Isaacson. Felicia Pendleton, Community Advocate. Yasmeen Porter Abbott, Community Advocate. <laughs> Annette Randolph, Block Captain. <laughs> 
Fadwa Robinson, entrepreneur. Nazara Sabri, Senior Director of Commerce. Hanaya Sharp Brown, Director of Advocacy and External Engagement for the School District of Philadelphia. Sharia Shoat, Founder and CEO of Buddy Speaks Foundation. Brittany Smalls, President of Millennials in Action. Tamara Staley, Community Advocate. Giovanni Thompson, Community Advocate. Delana Wardlaw, Medical Doctor. Michelle Watson, Community Advocate. <laughs> Veronica White, Community Advocate. Tiffany Wilson, Director of Constituent Services for Senator Vincent Hughes. <laughs> Sharon Wood, Community Advocate. What an incredible list of women we've honored this year. We thank you for your contributions to Philadelphia, and I know the future of Philadelphia is bright with these wonderful women living and working in the greater Philadelphia region. I would now like to introduce this year's keynote speaker, Kristen Welker. Welker is an award-winning reporter for NBC News, serving as chief White House correspondent and co-anchor of the network's Weekend Today show. She was raised in the city's Fairmount section and is a graduate of the Germantown Friends School. She went on to attend Harvard University, where she graduated with honors. Walker began her career in broadcast journalism with an internship at NBC's Today Show in 1997 and worked at several television stations before coming home to Philadelphia in 2005 as a reporter anchor for NBC 10. She became one of NBC's lead White House correspondents in 2011. Councilman Johnson, thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you all today. It is such an honor to simply be included and also to be joined alongside so many remarkable women who, like me, also proudly call Philadelphia home. And I miss my hometown. I do wish we were all gathered together in person to really celebrate one another during Women's History Month, one of the greatest months of the year. But hopefully that's going to happen soon enough. I don't have to tell all of you, this has been a year of unthinkable loss and hurt for so many people all across the country. And I know not one person here has gone unimpacted by the pain of the pandemic. So in a year that presented each of us with unprecedented challenges to the women being honored today, I want to truly congratulate all of you for accomplishing so much in the face of what has been a testing year on everyone. And it makes me think of my own experiences and challenges this last year, both personal and professional. I think of the women who I lean on, learn from, 
and love day in and day out. And it did all begin in Philadelphia, where my mother, Julie Welker, first told me I could achieve my dreams and goals if I dedicated myself and worked for it. My mom really paved the way for me. She's a native Philadelphian who broke barriers, becoming one of the first African-American business owners in the city. And I've always tried to live up to the example she set, whether reporting at the White House, moderating a debate, or co-anchoring Weekend Today on Saturdays. As a journalist in Washington, I have formed a sisterhood, a true sisterhood, of strong female colleagues at NBC News, and also with all of the women covering the White House for other news organizations. My friends, many who are mothers and caretakers, who've had to make significant life adjustments just to cope and adapt to this new world we're operating in. We as women succeed, flourish, and grow when we support and lean on one another, both when times are celebratory and especially, especially when they are challenging. And of course, one of the most important things we can do as women and for women is mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. I can't say it enough. You have to find a mentor at any age, whether just starting out in your career or in a more senior role. Finding someone who you can go to for advice, guidance, and friendship, that is paramount to finding success. And I will never forget that the late, great Gwen Ifill took the time to take me to dinner when I first arrived in Washington to welcome me to the White House Press Corps. Growing up, there weren't many women in broadcast news who looked like me. So Gwen was one of the few who did. And from now until eternity, really, the profound impact that made on me is hard to put into words. And then I also think of my D.C. mom and another Philly news giant, Andrea Mitchell, an absolute legend who took phone call after phone call for me when I was just getting set up here in Washington and learning the ropes. She's been in the business for 40 plus years and certainly has enough on her plate already. But with the things she's faced in her career as one of only a few women in newsrooms for decades, she knows how important it is for women to support other women. And I have been a beneficiary of that. Women like that really made my journey a little less bumpy. And that's why it's not just important to find a mentor. It's more important to be a mentor. Lend a hand to someone just breaking into the business. Take that phone call from the young professional who just might need a bit of guidance. Help other women follow in your footsteps and always try to be a friend whenever possible. Because if this last year has proved anything, it's that fostering those relationships are more important than ever. So to Councilman Johnson, it is such an honor to be involved today. I thank you for your leadership, your shared love of my hometown. And I just want to say the biggest congratulations again to the women who are here today. Here's hoping 2021 looks a little brighter. I want to thank NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Kristen Welker for taking time out of her busy schedule to give our keynote address. It was my pleasure to honor these remarkable women this year and the inspiration they provide all of us every day. Even at a joyful moment like this, we must take a brief pause to honor those we've lost this year due to the coronavirus, gun violence on our streets, or by natural causes. 2020 has been a difficult year for everyone, but I am hopeful that brighter days are ahead. I hope everyone watching found this year's virtual Women's History Month celebration uplifting. I want to end our event with a quote from media icon Oprah Winfrey. Think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. I want to thank all the members of my Philadelphia City Council staff who had a role in putting together this year's event, especially my office manager and special events coordinator, Tiffany White. I am Philadelphia City Council member Kenyatta Johnson. I look forward to seeing everyone in person for our Women's History Month event in March 2022. Thank you for watching.